crash of armed robberies across the city. All of the victims were walking as men got out of a car, according to police, and attacked them at gunpoint. CBS 2's Marissa Perlman is live in Lakeview right now, where one of those robberies took place. Marissa? All right, good morning to both of you. This latest string of robberies all across the city with seemingly no neighborhood connection, but happening within mere minutes of each other. The first one, as you said, happening here off of Diversity near Lakeview East. A man and a woman were crossing the sidewalk when they were attacked. Now, again, we're talking about three robberies in less than an hour. Lakeview, Old Town, and South Loop. In all three of the robberies, four men jumped out of a black sedan. Here on Diversity, they forced the man to the ground. He was hit with a handgun. The four suspects took their phones and wallets and took off. Now, less than 20 minutes later, off of Weed Street in Old Town, another robbery. Two women were on the sidewalk when four men jumped out of a black car and took their phones and purses. Thankfully, in this situation, they were not hurt. A half hour later, a final robbery. This time, the victim was a 55-year-old man walking on the sidewalk. Once again, four men jumped out of a black sedan, hit the victim in the face with a gun, and stole his wallet and backpack before taking off. Now, in each of these robberies, police say there is no one in custody. They are investigating, and police have not said if they believe all of these robberies are connected. We'll be working. Now, a uh, couple key things here that I want y'all to parse out of this situation because it's not enough to just say, oh man, every night is overnight robberies in Chicago. A couple different things that I want y'all to take out of this, okay? The first thing that I want y'all to take from this is that. This is happening to the most vulnerable people amongst us. It's happening to anybody, but it seems like it's easier for them to target people that are vulnerable. 55-year-old man, two women walk in, you know, and nobody should have to be with their head on a swivel. That would be the ideal thing, but I want y'all to be safe out here. I want y'all to understand that regardless of how mad people over in Chicago get mad at me, this is something that's happening prevalently in Chicago on a regular basis. And so I know I have a lot of watchers. We study the analytics, analytics. We we look at what's happening across um, all of our social media platforms. We have a lot of people that tune in that's in the Illinois and the Chicago area to watch the show. It ain't sweet out here. Overnight, whole sprees of robberies that's happening across Chicago and its metro area. Women are not safe out here by themselves, regardless of how you feel like feminism has empowered you to be the strongest, toughest woman. They are coming out here. They laying you on the ground. They hitting you with the butt of the gun. They beating you in the head. They taking your phone. They taking your stuff and they pulling up in the car and you never even seen them coming. You think that you're going to be walking down the street. And you're going to be able to spot them and then make a U-turn and then go across the street or go and get in your car or lock your doors and just drive off. That's not how it work. Sometimes y'all stop at the stop sign and they pull up in the car and they put that pistol in your face. And it ain't nothing that you're going to do as a result of it. And they robbing a, the, the Lyft drivers. They robbing the Uber drivers. They robbing everybody. And so y'all got to be very, very careful. This is not a go off on Chicago situation. I go across and I look at crime that's happening all across the United States of America. And what I found is the most egregious crimes that's being reported. And if you don't like it, then go and talk to the people that's doing all of the crime and the robbing. The most egregious crimes that's being reported is usually happening in Houston and Chicago and even in Broward County. All right. So if I see other things that's happening more egregious that I feel like I need to warn the people about, then I will bring that to the front of the congregation. But for right now, they are robbing multiple different people over in Chicago. Also, there's a child that was found inside of Walmart that was freezing, and I believe the worker got fired as a result of it. Take a look. A five-year Walmart employee here in the Metro loses her job for posting a video that has gone viral. Felicia Darling says when the child entered the Byram store last week during record-breaking cold temperatures wearing only a diaper, well, she had to do something. I spoke to her tonight, and she says she knew she had to do something quick. Felicia Darling said something to the mother, as did a male customer. Here's some of the interaction. He came in here with that jacket on. Yeah, he did. That baby just had a pimp on. That's all he got on. I can't. She's just an innocent soul. He didn't ask to be here. 
So I took action and I started recording her. Then it's in the video. Now look at the mama. Listen, listen, listen. Because they're going to cuss you out. And they got on jeans, a sweater, a bonnet, whatever it is that they got on. And they're going to cuss you out. Look at her. So I took action and I started recording her. So that's the mama. The kid, which is allegedly five years old, is sitting in, came in in record-breaking freezing temperatures, sitting in the basket, only had a pamper on when they came in, freezing, neglected, and they feeling, and think about this, think about this. This is not just, imagine what happens behind closed doors when they're not in public. Imagine what happens when they when they behind closed doors and they and they not in public. But they feel so empowered to do what they want to do that they are basically doing this right in front of your eyes. And if you say something, you're going to get fired about it. And I dare you to say something. I dare you to say something. I dare you to say something. Now, because I'm an equal accountability smoke giver, what they'll then say is when they clip this up and they put this on Instagram or TikTok and they say, Anton is always going off on women. No, we're holding the ones that are doing the most egregious things inside of our environment and our communities accountable because you cannot have your child in a pamper coming in the store, shopping in Walmart in the freezer section and they freezing and they wet inside of the basket, sitting in the regular part of the basket. And then you going off on the people that's holding you accountable for having your kid out there looking like a fool. This is the environment that we live in in today. And the employee got fired. The employee got fired. Then it's in the video, she throw cold food on the baby. Yeah, don't do that. And he sadly just looked down. Somebody called police on her. It seemed like in his eyes, he was just looking for help. He was crying out for help. A man was telling her, you throwing cold food on the baby. She walks off and twerk. I Somebody call police. No, what's wrong with you? Somebody call police on her. Who are you? Lawyer boys. Lawyer boys. Who are you? Get out that man. Get out that man. Please. Crazy. That's um. That's somebody mama, y'all. Somebody hit that. No father in sight. That's somebody's mama. And more importantly, that's her son that's going to grow up with that generational trauma. And then he's going to grow up and he's going to be what he's going to be. The mama's going to be mo moved on and lived her life. And then we going to be holding him accountable. He going to be calling up to my show, right, when he's 20. And he's going to be saying, Anton, I can't believe you did this and this and that and so on and so forth. And he's going to get pissed at me. And he's going to be mad at me because he's not used to seeing what a man looks like. And he's used to being trained on what his mama is doing inside of the grocery store. Brought him in there freezing cold. God hope, God willing that he survives. But if he, if he then becomes a part of the prison industrial system, we'll hold black men accountable and we'll say, and we'll use it as an insult and we'll say, well, who hurt you? You need to get that fixed. Nobody is ever going to hold his mama accountable. We never going to have that conversation. The only thing that we going to say is that men need to be better in order to make sure that we protecting these queens. Don't you know that protection is also holding people accountable? Because we're not trying to protect the child. Y'all only want to protect the woman. I see so many people that come in my comments and think that I'm crazy because I hold people accountable that do the worst things for society. They skip right over when I hold the men accountable. And then when we hold the women accountable because this is happening and somebody had to lose their job because they recorded it, because they wanted to bring visibility what's happening inside of their own stores and their communities, and she was twerking in front of the kid, guess what? You think she's going to lose her kid? I guarantee you she don't. I guarantee you she don't. I guarantee you we spend more time making sure that they get a pathway to make sure that they can hold their own kids instead of holding them accountable for how it is that they're supposed to be raising their kids. I guarantee you she don't. What the hell? No. Somebody call the police on her. Go ahead and see if I already called two times. 
time I keep paying. So long as you got hot water, fire extinguisher. But when you come in the store fully dressed and your baby's not. Right now, I'm going to call a cop right now. A customer in a riding shopping kid. cart purchases. That's crazy. That is crazy. You have to have another customer. I didn't. This is my first time seeing this video. So most of the stuff that y'all see me look at, unless it's money related, you see me reacting to for the first time. A customer had to go and purchase a shirt for the child in order for the child to stop freezing inside of the man. That's crazy. Adults can't even go into the into the store without shirt, shoes, and, and some sandals on. This is insane. This is insane. Unreal. And I know Mike Jones that she got her child taken away from her, but guess what? You don't think that she's going to get him back? I guarantee you she get him back. I'm going to pay attention to this story specifically. I'm going to write it in my notes and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. I guarantee you she get her kid back. This is an outfit for the boy and dresses him while the mother flips through her phone. After the lady in the riding cart put the um, outfit on the baby, she walks out of Walmart and, and started walking to our car. She was walking to our car, a cop was walking behind her. And um, they arrested her and they took, they took the baby. They took the baby and CPS was called. 26-year-old Cambria Darby was arrested and charged with child neglect. Child Protective Services released the child to a family member. Not to the father. I want to be very, very clear. Not to the father. They released the child to a family member. To a family member. Not the father coming, picking him up. Not, because, you see, if it, if it was a father in a home, none of this would even be happening in the first place. Byram police say Darby has bonded out. We reached out to Walmart after Darling was fired. This is their statement in full. Quote, we share the concern others have for the child in the video in our store in Jackson, Mississippi. We don't discuss personnel matters involving current or former associates. We ain't even got to read what rest of that because we, we already know that this is just a regular statement. This ain't even, this don't mean nothing other than to say, yeah, man, we got to protect ourselves legally and we had to fire this person because they made us look bad. They didn't, they didn't. It, it honestly just break my heart, man. It break my heart. And I can't ignore it because the less visibility we have, the less likely you are to hold people accountable that you see doing similar things that lead to these same results. It can't just be me. It can't just be me because we all know somebody in real life that operate just like this. We all know somebody in real life that got one too many kids, even if they only got one kid, they got one too many kids and they not fit to be a parent and there's no father in sight inside of that household. At all. We know too many people like this and this is not normal. This is only normal. This is normalized. Within our own communities, we just now got the cameras to bring visibility to it so I can bring it to y'all attention. Also, on top of that. Prosecutors in Queens expected the man accused of killing 14-year-old Amir Griffin to accept a plea deal. But this suspected gang member changed his mind and decided to go to trial instead. Amir killed by a stray bullet while playing basketball at a playground in Jamaica back in 2019. Eyewitness News reporter Joe Torres live at the Queens Criminal Court in Kew Gardens with our lead story. Joe. Sandra and Bill, after laying out all the evidence before the accused, investigators here in Queens were convinced that Sean Brown today would plead guilty to the murder of Amir Griffin, so much so that the Queens District Attorney herself came to the courtroom to see it. Well, that never happened. Something else happened, and our camera was the only one in the courtroom to capture it. Order, Accused killer Sean Brown walked into Queens Criminal Court this afternoon and gave no sign of the stunning decision he had up his sleeve. With the Queens District Attorney and her team of investigators in court, Brown's lawyer told Judge Kenneth Holder her client will not plead guilty to the fatal shooting of 14-year-old Amir Griffin. He will take the case to trial. It's a process. 
and he's entitled to the process and he's going to um, take that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. I mean, everybody is entitled to the deer in court and he wants his. On October 26, 2019, a bullet struck and killed Amir Griffin as he played basketball at the Baisley Park houses in Jamaica. Investigators said the alleged shooter tried to kill a rival gang member, but in a case of mistaken identity, shot the innocent teenager instead. During an I hate this culture. I hate everything about this culture. I hate that the culture hate me. I hate that it's somebody's son. Tomorrow and today and the next day and the next day and the next day after that and this month. And when the weather break, it's going to be summertime and it's going to be more killings. And somebody's daughter is going to get bust down and somebody's son is going to get shot. And then and the ones that survive and that wind up robbing him, they're going to go on Instagram and they're going to be having a money phone and they're going to be flaunting it. I hate everything about that culture because it ain't even my culture. I hate everything about the culture. I hate the fact that he could even sit there and take his day in court and decide that he don't want to plead guilty and that we all just hold it down. And he going to have some people that got more support for him than the person than the people that got some support for me. They will sit there and say, Anton, you a lame for never going to jail and they will have free t-shirts free ray ray free whoever he is t-shirts free sean while they running around polluting our streets killing your sons and busting down your daughters i hate everything about this culture i hate everything about this culture everything about it and don't tell me that it's wrong to hate because it's not wrong to hate I hate pedophiles. I hate this trash culture that we continue to promote. I hate that woman that was sitting there. I hate the behavior of that woman that was sitting there bringing her kid inside a Walmart with no clothes on and had the nerve to twerk in front of people. I hate everything about it. I hate it. And you're going to sit there smoking your trees talking about free Ray Ray. Everything about this culture is trash. And you will say F the police, but you won't say F the person that killed your son with a stray bullet because it was a mistaken identity and your son was just trying to play basketball in the park. You won't hold him accountable, but you will hold the police accountable for not catching him fast enough, right? In a news conference in March of last year, the DA said following Amir's death, a feud between gangs resulted in 22 more shootings, one of them fatal. A three-year investigation resulted in a 151-count indictment against 33 reputed gang members. According to prosecutors, one of those gang members was Sean Brown, who apparently told investigators he would enter a guilty plea and accept the ensuing 30-year prison sentence. And then today happened. The end result for the 21-year-old could ultimately be even more time behind bars. For the murder of Amir Griffin, Sean Brown is facing 25 years. For carrying a gun, he's facing 15 years. His exposure is 40 years to life. He's chosen to go to trial. We have an extremely strong case, and we look forward to presenting the evidence. I hope they throw him under the jail. I, I hope that he never get out. I hope, I hope that, man, let me just be quiet, bro, because I'm going to wind up saying something. Because, see, this is the Million and Morning Show. And I want to make sure that I respect the churches and the daycares and the people that's working from home, that's on a meeting, that just so happen to get distracted by what we got going on over here. Make sure you keep us on the TV. I got you. I got you. I'm not going to say nothing crazy. Shout out to all of the people in the and the shops and the people that's at the pit stops and all of that. I got y'all. I just don't like the culture. I don't like it. And if you with me and you don't like the culture, then hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications, man.